Facts of UFO investigations. Exactly what is going on at Rudlow Manor? We investigate. And a story of a haunted pub. Remember, if it's weird, if it's paranormal, if it's supernatural, it's in the Y Files. <laughs> many people in the United States have been absolutely convinced that there's been a huge military cover-up when it comes to the subject of UFOs. But what about here in Britain? Well, we're in Wiltshire, just a stone's throw away from Caution, and just a stone's throw away from a top-secret military base called Rudlow Manor. Behind me, a whole series of caves and tunnels that link that and other bases nearby. We're also going to be talking to one of the most controversial figures in British ufology, Nick Pope. But first, joining me is Matthew Williams, our resident expert on the Y files when it comes to UFOs. Matthew, below us here is an entrance to a cave uh, which leads to tunnels. What exactly is down here? Well, this is the starting entrance point for the uh, bathstone quarries, which were um, about the turn of the century used for hewing out the bathstone, which is used in the town of Bath, the cream-coloured stone. The military came in in about 1945, converted all the old tunnels to uh, be able to house bombs, and they turned a place called Rudlow Manor, which had tunnels beneath it, into an underground complex, which was an intelligence centre, a communication centre, and also a centre which now we know today um, has had an involvement with the investigation of UFOs. So if you're sort of very courageous and you use one of these entrances, you can use the old tunnels to get in to as close as you can the new tunnels. You can actually have a little peek at what's going on underground. And that's something you've actually done, isn't it? Yes, we've been down there. I haven't actually been able to find the entrances that some people have seen, but apparently it's all down here if you've got the courage to go in and have a look. Right. So what do you think is actually going on down there? Well, it's not a case of thinking anymore because uh, I used to have rumours given to me about what was going on at Rudlow Manor. We've now spoken to people who work there um, and to people who have worked there in the past who say that uh, there's a very large underground town uh, which will be used in a, an emergency for housing the royal family, all of which is absolutely true. I've got uh, documents which relate to this now. But um, what we also know is that uh, back in 1990, uh, there was a sort of operation going on underground in the tunnels whereby uh, the UFO reports of the UK would all come in to Rudlow Manor. Now they deny that they never they never actually investigated UFOs here, but we've got documents which have been released under the Public um, Information Records Act, which uh, are back from the 1960s, which say the Provost and Security Service used to investigate UFOs. Now they moved from Acton to Rudlow Manor, so it seems rather likely now that uh, there are investigations that have gone on here which we don't know about. So. Now, much like Area 51 in the United States, there are lots of rumors and stories about this place and, and stories that there are alien bodies, there are craft. Is that taking it too far, do you think? Well, there are a number of figures in British ufology. Some um, have claimed that uh, there are things like alien bases in the UK and UFOs being housed and tested and dissected, whatever. Um, unfortunately, some of these claims are very hard to prove, as you'd probably imagine. But uh, Rudlow Manor has been featured by one such person as being a place that's connected with that. I can't confirm that. All we can confirm is that people who've worked there and government documents which have been released do relate to this place having investigated UFOs in the past. And we'd really like to know what they were doing, so... Um, it may be, but we can't really say at this moment. Okay, now one controversial figure we mentioned is Nick Pope, who, who you mentioned as well now, Matthew, who works in the Ministry of Defence, has published one book on UFOs, and is about to publish a second. We put up with him a few weeks ago to find out more. Now, Nick, you are a fairly controversial figure because you do still work for the Ministry of Defence and many people feel that you're almost in a vehicle 
being used by them to acclimatize people to information. In other words, you're deliberately releasing information in a fairly controlled way. I've heard these rumors before. People say that I'm part of a campaign to acclimatize the public to some sort of extraterrestrial reality, and people see um, my books as being part of this wider campaign. But I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, dispel that myth. It, it is just myth. Um, I, I wrote the book simply because I believe that people have a right to know what's going on, and uh, there's some really fascinating stuff. It's not being covered up, it's just not being talked about openly because of the embarrassment factor. Uh, frankly, people just don't know how to, to deal with this subject. Now, many people would ask, though, Nick, how have you got away with publishing a book about UFOs when you work for the Ministry of Defence on UFOs? I mean, that's never really been, been done before. How have you got away with doing that? How have they allowed you to do that? Uh, as long as there's no classified information, there's no problem if you get your, your text cleared by the Ministry. Really? They don't, they don't mind you doing this? No, that's right. I, I have clearance for my book. It uh, went through a formal procedure that, in fact, all books written by civil servants uh, and military officers have to go through. So um, my book is, was treated in exactly the same way as, uh, say, General Sir Peter de la Villiers' book on, on his time as Commander-in-Chief of the British Forces in the Gulf. So you've written a lot of stuff in your first book. Are there things that you do know that you can't tell us? Oh, yes. But uh, no aliens in our warehouses and that sort of stuff, I'm afraid. But uh, yes, of course, there'll always be uh, some things that I worked on which I, I can't go into details of. I mean, I think that's, that's really true of anyone that works in the Ministry of Defence. The controversial figure there of Nick Pope. Uh, no matter how you try with Nick to get him to admit that he knows more than he's saying, he just he won't, I'm going to have to say. What do you make of, of, of Nick Pope? Well, he's a very good politician-type character. I mean, as you say, very hard to get any real answers out of him. Um, he only talks about cases which are well-known, and he's very reluctant to go into things which are not so well-known already. Um, now, Rudlow Manor was one thing I asked him about. I asked him back in uh, 1994, did he know about Rudlow Manor? He denied having any knowledge whatsoever of Rudlow Manor. So I came back to him um, some months later and asked him the same question again, and he did say then that he knew about Rudlow Manor but only after we'd already had an admission from the MOD that uh, they were prepared to say that it had dealt with coordination of UFO reports. But he said he didn't know anything about Redlow Manor, which wouldn't be true because we've now found out that at the time that he worked in Air Staff 2A, he received his reports directly from Redlow Manor and he would have known all about it. So he was telling a little fib, I think, about not knowing what Redlow Manor was at the time. Now, Matthew, it's a little unusual, isn't it, for someone who's, I believe, still working for the Ministry of Defence to actually publish a book about UFOs, which was something he was working on. Is he just a kind of an acceptable mouthpiece for the things the Ministry of Defence want us to know? Well, the considered opinion of myself and a number of other ufologists is that uh, because Nick is talking about UFOs in a, a sort of, it does exist, they are out there attitude, but he's actually playing down the MOD's investigation role now that, to me, because we know exactly how much the MOD has really done, the public don't know that, but ufologists do, hmm. we have to say that it's almost like a public information exercise, and that Nick is releasing information as uh, prescribed by somebody, and he's not telling quite the full truth. Now it's hard to believe that you can actually get inside these tunnels, but underneath this, this hole here, there is indeed uh, a gap that you can get through that, that gets you into them, isn't there? Well, the tunnel systems here are just old quarry tunnels, but mm. these are used as emergency exits for staff who work in the tunnels if they need to get out. There are grills from the main tunnels in there. Right. And uh, they link to other bases in different parts of uh, Caution and other parts of Wiltshire. I mean, we're not talking about just a little bunker here where a couple of people sit. Uh, we're talking about a regional Sikhs of Government bunker, 15 miles big underground, a town with roads pubs, hospitals, post offices. This is where the royal family are going in an emergency. And it's an intelligence centre as well. I mean, we're talking about a major facility. Communications are controlled here worldwide for the military. It's really big and it's one of the best kept secrets in the UK.
So, what exactly is going on beneath the ground, beneath Rudlow Manor, in those miles and miles of tunnels? Well, your guess is as good as mine. One thing is for sure, though, there are plenty of signs to remind you to keep out, and that this, as termed by the Official Secrets Act, is a top secret installation. Certainly in one part of the base we visited, the video cameras were on us from the moment we arrived, and they stayed with us till the moment we left. In fact, just as we were leaving, a police car also arrived. I suspect it uh, noticed that we were from the Y files and not from some uh, other government trying to find out some top secret information. Maybe that's why they didn't arrest us.